Hi, my name is Sam Biddle and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is just one of the designs that I do on the Nail Art at Night Facebook Lives. I hope you enjoy and I'll see you online. So let me go on and start with this. Now this is, I've actually added this. I know I was waiting for some of the collection to come. I've actually used some of it already. So I've actually had to add from it from my supplies. Um, but uh, we are first of all going to start with the base layer. So we're not gonna put the crystals on first. We're gonna put the puppy on first. Now, with any design like this, you have to think to yourself that you are um, working in layers. So whenever you're doing nail art, always work in layers. So we're always going to work from the back to the front, okay? So obviously he's sitting right in the background and he's going to have some little pores and we're actually going to do the pores out of plasticine gel. And I'm going to use regular gel as well. Now I could do the crystals first, but I'm actually going to do um, the painting first before we do the crystals. The other thing that I want to also uh, take advantage of since I've got your undivided attention. So I wanna show you the Be Creative Medium. Now this is a very uh, little known product that um, uh, you, know, you can use to create like a watercolor effect with your nail art. It's a really, really um, good little tool. So all I'm gonna do is put the medium down onto my, let me just zoom in a little bit. Now I'm hoping I'm gonna stay in shot. I'm gonna put the medium down on my palette. We're just gonna put it here. And what the medium does is it dilutes the paint, but it allows it to, um, uh, what's the word, merge better. So it sort of gives you a more of a watercolor effect, which is really what we want. So although we're not gonna get rid of the pigment, we're actually going to get more of a, um, uh, where you blend the paint together and you can, it, it's like, you know, having watercolor. Right, let me just grab my water and wash my, my thing out. And so worried that I'm going to do something awful online and lose everything. Okay, so let's pop that over here. Put a paper towel on my lap. And we're gonna grab my, um, where is it? Where is it? Here we are. Now we're just gonna do some painting. We're gonna start with the lighter color. Always start with the lighter color first. Now what I have done before um, is I've sketched the puppy before and um, there's something seriously wrong with my brush right now. What's going on with it? I might need to give it a quick of a, a bit of a clean. Um, now what I've done is I've painted the background with a nude and then I've put a glitter over the top and then I've put a matte top coat over the top of that. So we're gonna do the nose. Then we're gonna do the back of um, his head, but like I said in the other lessons, what we need to do is create shadow. So that nose is sitting out in front of, this nose is sitting out in front of this section here. So what we wanna do is we wanna create some shadow going on here, don't we? Hold on just one second, let me sort out this. Brush is doing funny things. I don't even think this is the right brush. Did I, am I doing the same as I did last time? So can you see how this is blending really nicely? Now that's because of the medium and what the medium does is it just allows you to pull the paint up and blend each other really, really well without using that much water. I haven't actually used any water, but this paint is staying wet a lot longer than you would think. You know, note to self, always check your brush before you start. I thought, because I've got this brush here, but I think I, think I did this last time, and I have this horrible thing that I'm using the wrong brush, you idiot, Sam. Right, okay, 
so this is the brush I did this before look at this brush this is the old brush throw this away Sam don't use it ever again this is the the brush I should be using I mean, seriously well if that's the only thing that can go wrong I'm okay with that so we're just going to blend all of this up now I want to have this white blade at the top of his nose and his nose is going to be little black nose I'm just going to blend all of this up Move a little bit more of this. Trust me, when you're doing things in the salon, this becomes a really quick uh, application method because this medium allows you to do so much more than you would normally be able to do with regular paint because you would have to come in and layer and you know go over um i don't know you, you would this wouldn't be so quick put it this way that's all i'm saying <laughs> so we're just going to come around here now you could do this with gel you don't have to use um paint for this i could not remember what i did last time so i know for the melon no i i'm i'm lying to you i didn't even know what i did for the melon sam show so I know that we wanted to do paint and we wanted to do gel and I'm pretty certain I did gel first time around, mainly because um, I would have probably got stage fright and so would have gone for the easiest option because gel is always the easiest option in my book when it comes to doing any kind of nail art like this, mainly because it just blends and I don't have to do any of this faffing around. So if I was doing this on a client, I would be using gel paint. So we're just going to pop that down like that. Now, if I remember rightly, I, I think we did do it in paint. So I'm just going to mix these two together. I think we did do it in paint because I think I had a, a bit of a paint malfunction. We're just going to do a little bit of a darker paint here. There we go. So he is sitting behind. Now to be honest with you, you could have this, all of this is going to be covered with crystals. So you don't really need to worry too much about having this perfect, unless you're not, unless it's going to be painted or if you're going to use a gel polish and just have this as a, as a red, uh, you know, it, whatever you want to do is entirely up to you. Let me just grab some water. And we're just going to come in here and we're just going to make a little bit of a chin. We are going to put a mouth on this little bad boy. He's not a bad boy. I lie to you, he's a cutie. Okay, so let's do some ears. Now we're going to go in here. Now I have got some gel paint which I might do some ears over the top with gel paint. But then again, thinking about it, we don't want glossy ears, do we? Mm -hmm. We could do it with plasticine gel. But then again, this is just too cute all on its own. So I just come down like this. I'm just going to do a little bit of a pointy bit at the bottom here. Now I'm going to come in with some black. Now I don't want to outline all of this and the reason why is because it's not a cartoon but I do want to emphasize certain areas and if I was painting Bertie he's actually got a little bit of a black tip on just the tip of his ear here. So I'm just going to come in like this. Use a dry brush. So this is now quite dry. So you can see, oops, can't see. I can't go any closer. So we're just going to just come in like this. Now this is extra shadow. This isn't a line. This is just extra shadow. 
Okay, you see, it just emphasizes things. Now, where else would there be shadow? I'm going to add a little bit of brown to this because we don't want a black line. We don't actually need a black line. I'm going to add a little bit of this medium in here, and that just helps it flow, makes life so much easier. And I want this to be a nice thin line, okay? So I'm just going to pull that liquid out of the bristles we're just going to come down here and can you see that it's just the very tip of my brush that's actually sitting on here okay Ooh, that's a bit dark isn't it i think i might need to go back in i don't know what i was thinking there but let's sort his nose out while we're waiting for that to dry So I am currently watching, oh, I can never remember the name. It's a glass blowing thing on Netflix at the moment. Oh my God, it's so good. It's, I sometimes wish, well, I was talking to Ethan today and I think I was thinking, I want to start taking up glass blowing. And he was like, oh, I'm watching the same program. It's so good. So we've decided that we're going to, when, when all of this, Hoo-ha is done with the pandemic. We're going to go and have a day glass blowing. How cool is that? So I um, I'm going to go watch that in a minute. I think to myself, how absolutely fantastic they must be. So we're just going to come and do a little. He's going to be peeping down around and over the heart. So all of the different places that you put the eyeballs will determine, he looks very cross. <laughs> well, do you know, we could make him cross, couldn't we? I don't know if we should, you know. It'd be sad since it's Valentine's. Right, let's put some white in his eyes. Um, but yeah, this, uh, I just sometimes think, gosh, how absolutely fantastic and creative these people are to come up with these things. But then again, fire. That is a bit scary, isn't it? To be sitting so close to something so hot. They're very brave. Have you guys seen it? It's, Oh, I can't remember what it's called. Blown Away, I think it's called. It's very good. Definitely recommend it. If you like things like the Pottery Showdown and, you know, those DIY programs and stuff like that, then this is sort of on par with that. Right, I'm going to open up his mouth just like this, just by adding some white, and then I'm going to come back in with the uh, cream colour. So if you ever make a mistake like I did, you just go back in with the white. The white knocks everything back. OK, and then you can go back in with your browns. Certainly when you're doing something and say that dark line is just way too dark. If you were to try and go in with brown, you would just keep making it worse. So if you go in with the white, let the white settle then go in with the brown you'll be you'll find it's a lot better so he's looking very stern i think it's because the eyebrows are way too close together now i could go oh yes i meant to do it like this i didn't i don't want it to be like this but it's better that i can correct it isn't that? That's better. That's so much better. Right, a little bit of that brown. We're going to go underneath here. So what I'm thinking I might do, let's get some of this dark brown. I'm using water now really watered watered down 
I'm just going to accentuate this cheek just like I showed you here. Literally watered all of this down. And then here as well. Okie dokie. So now if I just go in with a dry brush, this will just sort of wash away. Okay, right. Let's sort this mouth out. I should have just left it. Oh, it's a bit. So I'm making a real mess of it now. Now there is a little trick. When you are at this stage and you're thinking to yourself what am I going to do because all I see are brush marks and I've ruined it and it's no good and all that hard work and oh my god I'm never going to get it right again it's never lost and the reason why I say that I might just leave it like that <laughs> we're not going to give him a mouth Bertie doesn't need a mouth I'm just going to come in and I'm going to go over that pail and we're just going to go and pretend we never did any of that. So one thing I say is never stop until you have put top coat on. Because it, when you put your top coat on, that is when you really see how it will end up. So we're just going to do a little red collar and we're going to put a little gem on his collar as well but that comes later. So I'll just put a collar down here and that's just because all the others have got a little red collar. There we go. <laughs> There we go. All right, so once he is dry, let's go back on to this. Now, what I've got is I've got uh, Matt and Go, and you've obviously got Joker Shine as well. You can use any top coat. You don't need to use, okay, don't message me. Go away. It will go away. Sorry, guys. Um, you can use any top coat. You don't necessarily need to use what I'm using. You can see how the gloss looks with the background. Um, but we're just going to pop that. This is our matte top coat. And also what that does mean is that when we do put the gel down for the crystals, we can actually have um, the, oh, go away. Um, when we put the gels down for the crystals, we can actually, um, oh, I'm so sorry. What am I talking about now? Um, you can actually, uh, it would be a better surface to put the gels down for the crystals. Have I got the right? Oh no. Shit, this is the wrong one. Sorry, I'm going to be back in two minutes. Hold on. I've got the wrong pot. Uh, there we go. Okie dokie. All right. So what I've got here is I've got bubble gel. Now this is from Mystic Nails. This is a gel that you can use to apply your um, crystals on. It's also like a 3D kind of clear gel, which works really well for, you know, if you want to uh, make any sort of 3D looks with clear uh, transparent gels, all of these things is brilliant. I've also got a tiny little um, spotlight affair that I'm going to flash cure the crystals under. I can't show you what that light looks like, but I will show you in a minute. So what we're gonna do first off, and I'm cheating a little bit because I did panic and thought, whoa, what am I doing? I can't do loads of little crystals on such a big area. So I'm gonna do some larger crystals as well. So I'm just doing a small patch for the, um, the crystals I'm using the brand new crystal pro from um, Scarlet Center and we're just going to pick up some of these crystals 
I'm going to start with the larger crystals first and place them. And this is just a mixture of different crystals, different sizes. And we're going to go lots of pinky ones and almost ready ones. We're just going to come down. I'm literally just picking up and placing it on. And to be honest with you, because it is um, such a large area, it doesn't really matter. There's no real order that you need to put these in. Uh, I need some smaller ones. Whereas I can't see if I've got any. I've got a little bit there. I'm just going to pop that underneath the lamp, just flash cure that. My, I've got my wax, the, this little thing's just broken, which is annoying. So what I'm doing is just using my fingers, the heat from my fingers, just to mould it back into place. There we go. I think I must have dropped it. Um, okay, so we'll go back in and we'll just add a little bit more here. And this stuff is great because it's not going to flop all over the place. It's pretty much, it's a little bit thicker than builder gel. But it's, you could use builder gel for this as well. You don't have to um, use a specific uh, gel, um, uh, an application for gel. Sorry, sorry, an application for crystals. You don't have to use an application for crystals. But um it is a bit easier when you do. Oh, I don't know if I want that white one on yet. No, thank you. You can come off. I'm gonna, I don't want two the same. So we'll just pick up a small one like this. Oh, I'm so sad that this is broken. Another little one in here. There we go. Oh, this is a nice one. There we go. So you can see that we're just literally just keep adding, adding, adding. I'm going to change up the sizes, flash cure that, and then add a little bit more of the gel. And then we'll just pop all of this under the lamp. So we're going to do some big ones in here as well, just to save us a little bit of time. <laughs> And then I'm going to, while that's curing, I'll have a look at your comments. Guys, if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. Please do. Let's move that down there. Let's do a big one. Oh, there's a white thing in there. We don't want that. Um, what I was going to say is, have you seen the little baby drag? I've got the baby dragons to show you today little baby dragon lesson oh my god i can't stop making baby dragons i really can't i literally am obsessed and i keep looking at baby dragons and i'm like oh my god i could so do that one and i'm trying to find a little story behind my baby dragon family and names i keep sending them to my daughter and i keep saying oh what should we call this one what should we call this one I know, these are the things we talk about. Come on, Sam. Okay, let me just pop a little bit more gel in here and in here. Now, if I was doing this on a client, this would be the one nail. This would be the only nail that she would have as a accent nail, because you can imagine it takes a while I could do the little puppy on different nails, but this would be her, this would be her accent now. You can see it's starting to come to, together really. Oh, no way. I don't really want to ruin our... And what you can do is if you've got these little gaps in between, you can actually add 
tiny little bullion beads. I promise I won't put you through that today. But if you didn't want all of those gaps to show, you can add the tiny little bullion beads. Actually, you need to be smaller. You can go down here. You need to look at the colours as well, because I'm using lots of different pinks. You need to look at all of the different colours and the colour variants in your pinks too. Just move this around a bit. I would normally pop this out and I'm waiting on a little tray from Crystal Parade, but it's not arrived yet. I was hoping it would come before I finished doing all of these, but uh, it has not. So I am coping with this little glass dish. Can we need some more of these? There, there's another one. These little ready ones are just gorgeous. Those are all part of the little Puppy Love or the With Love from Mel and Sam. So you can see here I've got some larger ones. We're going to do some more larger ones at the bottom, but we don't want it to be too bottom heavy. And also bear in mind that you have a customer and her tip is going to be... Um, so I, to be honest with you, would you wear that? I don't know if you'd wear that on a tip. Maybe you might do. <laughs> so I'm going to do one larger one, but then that would be it. That would go to one side. Would we have one there or would it be there? Yes, it would be there. So Whenever I do things like this, I think to myself, I am so much in control of everything I do. I think about all of the things that could go wrong, like whether my tools would break, whether I have the right brushes. So I'm doing a crystal placement here and the crystal placement tool that I use, I it breaks. <laughs> and that's my fault because I probably dropped it so nothing to do with the tool but oh, so frustrating because what I need to do now if this was what I would do now if this was me in the salon or working on a client and this tool happened I would go to my heat my heater I've got a little blow heater here and I would put it in front of the blow heater and I'd mold it into a point but uh, you guys are watching me and it's a bit, I can't, I can't do that. So I'm not going to do that. Oh, come on. Oh, there's a purple one there. So sorry, I'm going to have to use the stumpy. There we go. There we go. But I have to say, I've used tweezers before. I even with a stumpy end, this is fantastic. It truly is amazing. So we're just gonna pop that underneath. So this is our little heart. Now we have got a little V going on here. So he does go down into a V, but I feel like we should have some kind of sort of, I don't know, something but I don't have anything here to make it more of a V or make it more of a heart shape. Although you can see it looks like a heart. And to be honest with you, I'll faff around with that. But to be fair, we're actually going to be putting little paws over the top. So I'm not going to do that today. But if I was thinking again, doing this again, I probably would do this as a darker colour underneath and then have the crystals over the top of that because then it would actually give me the shape that I'm looking for. Then we're nearly done. Is uh, We're going to actually use plasticine gel. So I was going to uh, use acrylic. The other little man here, he's got little acrylic, um, little acrylic uh, paws. But I thought what I might do is plasticine gel 
mainly because um, a lot of you have said to me, oh, I need to use plasticine gel. I don't use acrylic. So, you know, I thought this is the kind of thing that, you know, is works really well for plasticine gel. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of cleanser in a dish like this. And I'm using my palette again. I'm just going to grab some of the white. And I'm just going to put that down like that. Now, if you are at all concerned or worried or anything like that, then you must wear gloves when you're touching this product. Um, I'm, I very rarely use it. And so I, you know, I'm not doing clients all the time. But I would definitely say to wear gloves when you're using this product um, for any product that you put on the actual skin. I'm not going to, though, having said that. Uh, but I am going to try and use uh, do this without touching it at all. So we're just going to grab a little. Now, what I've done is I've mixed the skin color and the white together because the skin color is too. It's just not. It, that's my um prescription the skin color is just not uh, uh, uh it's just too pink for dog um you could get like a, another different kind of nudie color that would work as well but we're just going to get two little circles i'm just gonna you can roll this up just like you would plasticine in fact look at that for perfect i must have done this before <laughs> There we go. So we're just going to get really just get get it right. And we're just going to pop one of these pores straight on top of. Yeah, I've got a brush somewhere. Now you can use a brush or you can use a um, silicone tool. It's entirely up to you. I personally prefer using a brush don't over saturate the surface area so I'm just going to get a little some brush in my liquid and just take that out and we're just going to press the brush down here in fact it's not going to be the right brush I'm going to use this brush a little bit smaller of a detail brush we're just going to really just mold it now the liquid works the same way monomer would work so that it is um, allowing you to move and manipulate the product but without it sticking to the brush because that's what we don't want. We don't want it to stick to the brush. So we're just going to literally just make a shape here. Now I'm just going to come in and I'm using my brush. And I'm just going to create the little pore like that. Now you could have these smaller, depends how, if you were doing this on a client, if you were doing this as more of a 3D effect. But we want this to be cute. And I always believe, oh gosh, that's huge. I always believe that big pores mean cute. Although this might be just way too big. Too late now. Committed. Well, I think we could probably get away with it. So the more monomer you have, not monomer, cleanser that you have on your brush, the, the more, the less uh, control you'll actually have of your plasticine gel. Now this is plasticine gel, but there's all sorts of 3D, 4D gels out there. I maybe went a little too big, although I don't know. The whole look is actually quite giant anyway, so we, we could get away with that. Now, one of the things that Mel and I spoke about on the Mel and Sam show was the fact that we use an accent nail, just like this one here, in the middle of your design. 
Now you're not probably ever going to do that nail on somebody. And if you did, please, please send me a photo. But that accent nail is what draws your client to your design. And then they see all the other designs around that accent nail where they're attracted to that first nail. And then they're like, oh, but look. So this one here, you can see is a workable version of this one. This one's probably the accent nail, but you could actually have a workable version, a smaller version here. So I'm just gonna go all the way around like that. And I'm going to use my carving tool underneath like that, just to get it off the gems. Cute! So we could possibly put just little dentations for the claw marks. What's really nice is that you can do anything you like with this. You could even do tiny, tiny, make sure you put your tool in your cleanser. That's not the tool I want. I'm going to use the needle pen. Make sure you put that in the cleanser. You could even do tiny little lines, fur lines, and that will show up very subtle. It's going to be very subtle. I don't know if you can see this, but it looks cool. Can you see that? Maybe not. Let me show you. If you are interested in doing some fantasy, I um, am doing a course with these little, we're doing, this is the, this is the one that you are gonna learn. This is blue. It's an original name. I know it took me a while to come up with it. <laughs> but blue here, is got a tiny little crystal ball which you're going to learn how to make as well this is in a live lesson that's three hours long so you guys can learn and do it with me and then you will be invited to a virtual lesson this is where you and i i get to see your faces this time and this is rosie just so you know we'll be making rosie in the virtual lesson and then we'll do a course where we will have um Things like this, where we'll be learning how to do books. We've got Sticky, where you'll be learning how to create Sticky, which is created on an Arabella form. So you'll be doing all of these things. We'll even be making this little unicorn, although we might, we, I may well do something different with him, only because these two, it's the same process. It's just different. It's just different. And I think he's cuter than this one, but you know, you might be unicorn with them. Um, and then the last little bit that we are going to do is, let's, we've got to go to bed, guys. It's bedtime. We're going to use some of the gel. Now, this is Le Grand Gel. And uh, this gel here, when you put it on any surface, it has no inhibition layer. It just gives that shine without you needing to use um, another top coat, which is really, really handy when you're doing things like this. It's a quick fix. So you could go in with a little bit of top coat or you could go in with that bubble gel if you wanted to, but the extra black just really looks cool. 